Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the first Sunday of Advent from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin this season of Advent, this time of longing for Christ and looking forward to Christ, let's pause and acknowledge your sinfulness, all the things in our life that we really need to leave behind so that we can truly be looking and watching and waiting for Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful people, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, we may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. 
Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my brothers and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came, and carried them all away. So will it also be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. We all know that one of the big topics in our neighborhood and in our city and our country is crime. If you didn't hear enough about crime and the end of cash bail during the state and national elections, just wait until the 13 people running for mayor get revved up. 
There's crime on the CTA, smash and grab burglaries, carjackings, holdups. It's sort of become the background of life these days. And it all began to mushroom during the COVID pandemic. And there were fewer people out and about, fewer eyes watching. Well, that gave criminals a freer hand, more opportunity to commit crime. But here's the question. When do you typically think seriously about security? When do you get serious about protecting yourself or your property? After you've already been robbed, right? After the thief has already broken in. See, when crime happens to somebody else, it's just news. When it happens to us, it's personal. And it's interesting that in today's gospel, Jesus compares his coming, whether it's his return at the end of time or his coming for us at the end of our time, to a thief breaking in. Thieves count on us not being ready, not being prepared, thinking it won't happen to us, counting us being distracted and focused on other things. In other words, surprising us. And that's what Jesus said. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. And you know, we could also learn a lesson from the past, because when Christ came the first time, for the most part, people weren't expecting the Messiah they got. When God broke into this world, who thought it would be as a tiny baby in the middle of the night, in a little town far away from the movers and shakers in Jerusalem. Most of them were expecting somebody who was, well, more godlike, um, a warrior, someone from the priestly class, someone that we could more easily identify as the one we've been waiting for. They weren't expecting a peasant from some podunk town like Nazareth. They weren't expecting a construction worker, an itinerant preacher with no credentials from the religious establishment. Like a thief, he broke in when and where we weren't expecting it. If they had listened to what he was saying, people would have known who he was but they weren't really open to a God of surprises. And this is really what this season of Advent is about. It's about waiting. It's about learning to be prepared, learning how to wait, and how to always be on the lookout for the coming of Christ. Because Advent is it's not just a season, it's a lifestyle. See, there's, there, there's two kinds of waiting. There's a passive kind of waiting, that we do at the DMV or when we're in line at the grocery store or any place where we're just stuck. You just stand there until your turn comes. But then there's an active kind of waiting, which is what Advent is about. It's about focusing our lives on what is to come. It's about clearing the clutter out of our life in anticipation of welcoming and receiving Christ in anticipation of Christ's coming. And St. Paul in our second reading today sort of gives a recipe, not just for Advent, but for life itself. He basically says, wake up, throw off your drowsiness. If you're still drowsy after that big Thanksgiving dinner, get over it. Stop distracting yourself with things that are passing away. Don't get so obsessed with what's going on in the Twitterverse. Don't get pulled in too deeply into the buying and selling and the eating and the drinking that's so much of what to the rest of the world this month is about. Sober up. Stop living just day to day and think about the big picture. 
Where am I going? What direction is this world heading? See, because when we focus on the end game, it influences the choices that we make each day and how we live each and every day. Now, it's been more than 50 years since I was being taught how to drive a car, but I still remember my driver's ed instructor reminding me over and over again, keep your eyes fixed down the road, raise your gaze, because that way you'll be looking far enough ahead that you'll have time to react when you get there. And when you're looking down the road, you can still see what's happening close to you. So what Advent is trying to teach us is a whole lot more than waiting for Christmas. It's waiting for Christ, however and whenever Christ comes. And if we're waiting for Christ when he comes for us at the end of time or at the end of our time, if we're focused on Christ's coming, then we'll also be prepared for Christ as he comes in the short term. Perhaps we'll experience Christ in the small child who's filled with wonder at the world around him. And hey, wow, we find Christ in the wonder of creation. Or maybe in the beauty of a, of a sunset, an old memory is healed, and we'll experience Christ coming to us. Or maybe when we're doing some charity work, helping feed the homeless, we, we notice their love and their joy, and we'll see Christ in that. Or maybe when a little voice says, time to put that pattern of sin behind you, we'll hear the voice of Christ. And then, of course, at the end of our life, and perhaps at the end of time. Our first reading from Isaiah gives us a vision for the future, a vision for the kingdom of God. And, and, and Isaiah talks about Mount Zion, Jerusalem, as being on this mountain where, where people from all over the world will stream, will climb that mountain to hear God's word and to submit to God's word and to be taught by God, taught about what real peace is about and what the kingdom of God is like. And then to go forth from that mountain to beat those swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. See, this, this great vision, this, this movement toward God to be taught and then out from God to recreate the earth, to recreate the world more like the world God dreamed it could be for God when he comes back at the end of time to take possession of heaven and earth. And certainly, the more we talk about a vision for the kingdom of heaven, we're reminded of how far we are from that vision. Every time there's a mass shooting, every time a life is taken on our city streets, every time the life of an unborn person or an elderly person or a handicapped person is disrespected, we realize how far we are from what Jesus dreamed for us. But that vision is meant to guide us day by day. We're not to be passively waiting for some politician to bring about prison reform or solve crimes in the street or put an end to the mental health crisis or the nations of the world to enter into a disarmament treaty. It's not passive waiting. Remember, Advent is about active waiting. If we want to see the world disarmed, we have to start disarming ourselves. We have to stop being so defensive, so angry, so resentful. We've got to stop holding grudges and hanging on to prejudices. We have to start loving our enemies and praying for our persecutors and being less self-centered and less sinful. We have to start climbing the mountain of the Lord ourselves. So Advent is really a call to action. And climbing a mountain, even a small mountain, takes effort. To create some space to welcome Christ in our life at the very time when the rest of the world is 
is trying to fill every nook and cranny in our life with stuff, it's an effort. To hold open a place for Christ that only Christ can fill is an effort. And then to keep it open all year long is a greater effort. But see, we celebrate Christmas every year not so that we can help the economy or not so we can remember some event in the past. We celebrate every year because every year Christ wants to be born in us, doesn't want to just dwell in church or dwell in a book, but wants to be dwelling in us. St. Paul says it's an opportunity to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we put on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we go forth from him to help recreate the world. After all, like all competent thieves, Jesus is highly motivated. He's highly motivated to break into our lives because we really are God's creation, and he wants to reclaim us as his own. So if we honestly try to live Advent, Christmas will mean much more to us this year because it'll be personal. Christ will have broken into our hearts, and our lives will be different forever. And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring to God the longings of our hearts and our dreams for the human family. For the church, that we may be attentive to the signs of the time and awake and alert to the actions of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of peace, that swords may be turned into plowshares and the resources of war into tools for human development, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who await God's blessings, especially those who are pregnant and those who are separated from family or homeland, that God's comforting and strengthening love will sustain them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For a greater reverence for God's creation, that we may respect and care for all that God has made, so that future generations may benefit from God's handiwork, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are alienated from the Lord or from the church, that our witness of faith, hope, and love may bring about a reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who long to be free, especially those with addictions and those in abusive situations, that with God's help they may find healing and a new beginning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, free us from the darkness of sin and lead us into the light of your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O holy city, seen of John, 
Where Christ the Lamb does reign, within those four square walls shall come no night nor need nor pain. And where the tears are wiped from eyes that shall not weep again. O shame to us who rest content while lost and greed for gain in street and shop and tenement Ring gold from human pain, and bitter lips in blind despair cry, Christ has died in vain. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, may that gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Bless Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Amen, 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 amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's share that gift of peace with the world. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Comfort, comfort, O my people, speak of peace, now says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning neath their sorrows, Lord. Speak unto Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. Tell of all the sins I cover, and that warfare now is over. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reminder that on our website every single day, beginning on this first Sunday of Advent, uh, we have an Advent calendar with a meditation, a, a scripture verse, and a piece of art to help you uh, journey through the Advent season. And we look forward, if possible, to celebrating with you in person at Christmas time, if not sooner. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The advent of our King, our thoughts must now employ. Then let us meet Him on the road with songs of holy joy.